Good morning. How is everybody today? I'm going to let my friends from Zoom come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, thanks for joining me this morning. How is everybody? Good. I'm delighted you got your technology fixed. <laughs> oh my gosh, last week was crazy. I know you saw the story. <laughs> I, I was distraught. I was waiting for like 20 minutes and then they go, well, try it again. I'm like, oh, I'm over. <laughs> well, I, it's nice to know I missed that way. And I'm always going to be able to jump on and do this Facebook Live. Oh. So if that ever happens, you just Anna, you're to wonderful. Go. What you do every Monday morning is so special. Oh, thank you, Jill. I appreciate that very much. I look forward to this uh, every every Monday. And, you know, like I've said, it's really become a platform for, for me. It's become a platform for a lot of us. Um, I've been a professional coach for a little more than 10 years. And so um, I, I do a lot of coaching through my role at Keller Williams. And uh, I also have, you know, usually a small clientele that works with me throughout um the year uh, that just finds me word of mouth. And when all of the things started happening back in um, April and May with COVID and, and things shutting down, I just realized, you know, this is an opportunity. And I think there's always an opportunity that can come out of conflict or chaos or whatever you want to call it, challenge. And uh, so I decided to use my platform and, and maybe even stretch that platform and um, you know, just find a way to reach out and support people and encourage people and do what coaches should do, which is show up and be that um, person who can help you look at things from a different perspective. So I'm, I'm thrilled that you get value out of it. I'm, I'm always excited every Monday when I log on to Zoom and find you guys here because at least I can, you know, talk with you in a way that I can't talk to my, my peeps on Facebook right now, but you, I know you're there. And I do read all the comments. So if you're watching on Facebook Live, say good morning, uh, give us feedback or, or whatever you might be thinking along the way. And um, this morning, you know, I decided that I want to talk about something that I've touched on many times before. And that's because it's, it's this important. I, I really want to help get our mind set for not just this week, not just the month that's coming or the year that's coming, but really, you know, to help you look at ways to condition your thoughts so that you can kind of get out of your way at times and really live the life that you want to live. And while I re recognize that there may be, you know, different circumstances, challenges uh, in front of you at any given time, most of the challenge we can create in our own mind. And if we don't have the right mindset, uh, we can really, I think, shut ourselves off from the opportunities. And we can really um, tell ourselves a story that becomes true in our own mind. And then that truth tends to shape our reality. So is it okay if we talk a little bit about what you're thinking? Like I'm now? Guys, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> ask you guys to just take a minute and, and just really hit the pause button and recognize whatever thoughts you're thinking or what maybe you've been thinking in the last couple of minutes. You don't have to share if you don't want to, but really just recognize whatever it is that you've been thinking or saying to yourself. I, I personally have been, and as I mentioned before, I, you know, looking forward to the Mondays, the Monday with you to start the week. Because when I find I don't have a schedule or I haven't deliberately planned certain things to occur in my head, it gets me a little antsy. <laughs> uh -huh. So then I get really like, oh my, oh my. So it kind of shifts in terms of the energy focus and then reminding myself, here's the bigger plan. Here's the bigger picture, pay attention. So it's yeah. a combination of waves that come and go. Waves of different thoughts and, and emotions. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, you know, we are in a very unusual, uh, frenetic time in our lives. There are a lot of things that are coming at us and, and we need to interpret what's happening around us and filter what's happening around us. And there's also a lot of really great stuff happening around us if you choose to look for it. And I think that's probably the message for everyone this morning is, you know, what are you focusing on? What are you choosing to 
uh, center your thoughts on? What are you choosing to really go after right now? Um, because whatever you seek, you will find. And whatever, you know, however a man thinketh, he will become. So I, I, it's really, I think the message for you this morning is that you have a lot more control about your life and what's going on in your life than maybe some of you want to recognize. And it starts with the inner game, right? It starts right up in here. Um, and it starts with how you're conditioning your thoughts, how you're talking to yourself. I mean, think about it. We're talking to ourselves all day long. <laughs> yes. We talk to ourselves more than we talk to anyone else because we are always together. <laughs> I'm always here. So I'm talking to myself all day long. And, and I have, you know, I have to challenge you to take, take a step back and think like, well, okay, so of all the things I say to myself throughout the day, what ratio is positive versus negative? What ratio is supporting me versus holding me back? What's inspiring me versus what's discouraging me? And believe me when I tell you, this is not about just like, um, and thinking positive and all these things are going to change. You know that it has to uh, start with the thinking and then it moves into action. Yet, whatever we tell ourselves does become our reality. So how do you set your mind for the day? How do you set your mind for the week? How do you set your mind for the next project or for the next goal that you've set for yourself? And, you know, I think a couple of things that you, you want to uh, understand about your mind, it is here to serve you. Your mind is here to serve you. It, it's really waiting for your direction and it wants to make you, um, it wants to support you. It doesn't even want to make you happy. It just wants to support you um, because your mind doesn't have that sense of what's real and what's not real. So whatever you're telling yourself, your mind is just going to take that as truth. So if you say things that are essentially um, centered on things that you're not good at or that you're not enough, well, you're going to buy into that and you're going to really create a reality to support it right? Because your mind wants to support you. If you tell yourself that you're capable and there's really nothing you can't do, well, your mind's going to support that. And it's going to start looking for opportunities and creativity because it, it's programmed to believe, well, you want more opportunities, nothing you can't do. So I think it's important to realize that there are just certain, um, what we would call directives or functions of the unconscious mind and, and serving you is one of those. Protecting you is another. So I'll give you like a really easy example. Let's say um, I create a belief that snakes are bad, right? So snakes are bad. They're not, they're not helpful. They're not good for me. I'm going to avoid that at any cost. And when I come across any type of image of a snake, what am I going to think? Snakes are bad, right? So whether you want to hang out with a snake or not is not the point. It's just that it's, it's the connection to something that you've labeled a problem or is bad for you or something that is not serving you. So that's kind of what a belief, the beliefs are uh, that we hold on to. Those are the rules we live by. So our mind is just gonna protect us and be here to support us. So somehow along the way, whatever those beliefs are that may hold you back or limit you, you've convinced yourself and your mind that it's serving you, right? It keeps you safe. Because most of the time, change and things that we want to implement in terms of growth are, are not always simple and easy. Well, they may be simple, but they may not be easy, right? Because, because with growth, there must be change. And with change, we have to come out of our comfort zone. So that in itself, for a lot of us, can be a little bit scary. So when those limiting beliefs show up, it, they're, they're, your mind believes it's trying to protect you and keep you safe in that comfort zone but nothing grows in your comfort zone. So we know we have to step out of that. And so how we think and how we prepare our thoughts and beliefs are super important, right? So I think that, you know, my message again to you this morning is, is to get a little bit more aware of the conversation that you're having with yourself. I put on Facebook, it's time to tell the negative committee that's meeting in your head to sit down and shut up, right? <laughs> there's, there's this little committee having meetings all day long and it, it really believes that the agenda is serving you, but it's not, it's holding you back. 
right? So what are some examples of limiting beliefs or negative thoughts? Well, anything that is going to stop you, anything that is going to hold you back, anything that is going to make you feel less than, anything that is going to make you feel that you're not capable, right? So for, for all of us, those beliefs or those thoughts can vary. It can, it can really go from anything uh, that, that is related to our self-image, related to our ability to produce or to hit goals or to achieve certain things. And honestly, you've heard it before, but it's so true. If we were to really understand the potential that we have, it's overwhelming the potential that you have to do amazing, productive, successful things. I mean, the way that we're built, right, as humans and, and, and the ability that we have to have cognitive thought, to really think things through, to work things out, to plan, to strategize, uh, to create vision, to show up in our communities and in our workplaces and in our families as leaders and inspire other people to think bigger and to take action and achieve things. I mean, it's just, it's so exciting that when I think about someone who is really just keeping themselves in a box, um, I just become really passionate about trying to pop the lid for you and open that box up. And, and, and you know why? Because I've been there, right? This is not because I've just studied it or have helped coach people through it. I'm as human as the next person. And I have, I have seen the difference and where my life was under all these limiting beliefs and telling myself the things I can't do. And I've seen the growth opportunities that have come from really opening up myself and understanding and loving myself and developing that confidence in my ability. And really, I think more than anything challenging, because that's, that's really step two of how to remove limiting beliefs. Step one is awareness. You have to know that it's happening. You have to know that you're having that conversation with yourself first. You have to recognize the limiting belief. And then step two is challenge it. Like, where is it coming from? Where is so, it coming from? Yep, go ahead. So the question, um, given that there's challenges, we're all old enough to have had a couple. Um, when you look at the element of being a little bit scarred, maybe by a past experience, sure. the level of risk, and assessing the level of risk or courage it takes to take that next step, not a leap, but the step. Can you speak to that at all? Yeah, and I think that that's something that I've worked through with people in coaching. Uh, and some of this, I will be honest, takes takes it's a process and it may take having that other person like a coach to help you work through it because we will tell ourselves what we want to hear at any given moment. Like we have to recognize that, right? The mind is here to serve you. So if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling challenged, your mind will come up with other thoughts and conditions to help you feel better about that. So to your question, we're all programmed. We're all, we, we've all had life experiences and everything that happens to us, everything that we experience, whether it's uh, direct or indirect, right? Whether it's something we've heard, seen, uh, been a part of, decided, made decisions about, all of those things program us. And so the programming is what shapes our, our belief system and our belief system shapes our thoughts and our thoughts really shape our actions and that's what brings results. And then those results, the things happening to us, well, that's programming us again, right? So the question is, that's why I say the first step is awareness. If you can be aware that a certain thought pattern is, is really holding you back or limiting you or it's negative, well, then that's your opportunity to make a decision. And you have to decide, what do I want to do about that? And the first step is figuring out where it comes from. And we, we can identify, I'm sure, where those thoughts and feelings are coming from. There's some past life experience or an experience in our past, I'll say. Uh, like you said, <laughs> that like you said, yeah. Oh, it could be. I mean, depending on what you believe. Uh, and we'll talk about that on another episode of Monday Morning Mojo. Uh, but it, it's really a, an opportunity for you to ask yourself, is that true? Even though I may have experienced it, is that true for me today? Is that my reality today? What evidence do I have 
that is true. And even, even the experience and the outcome, right? That may not be what we're denying. We know the outcome was the outcome. Yeah, it's about what we've attached to that outcome as meaning, right? Mm -hmm. So in other words, whatever the outcome is, if it was successful or not, is it about success or failure or is it about success and opportunity or success and learning? And who's to say failure is even bad, right? Because we learn so much from that too, right? So it's all in how we put it into context. And I think that we have an opportunity to really make a decision every single day, every single hour really about what we wanna do going forward. Because what happened before I cannot change. I can only right. change what happens in front of me. So that's where I get to make new decisions. That's where I get to take new actions. Did I answer that question for you? Give you yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I think the key is knowing that we are capable of doing great things. We are capable to figure things out. And so maybe something didn't work out the way we thought it was going to work out before. Uh, does that mean history will repeat itself? Probably not, because you're not the same person you were then. You're not the same person you were yesterday. You're not the same person you were at 645 before you got on this call. Because what we're talking about is programming you right now to think differently, right? When I asked you to take 30 seconds and stop and think about what your thoughts were, if you wrote them down, look at it. Are you having the same thoughts right now? No. You're not, are you, Jill? Isn't that no. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And it's, it's only been 20 minutes. Yeah. And your thoughts already have changed. They changed in 20 seconds. Yeah. So I, I think that it's about getting a little bit more um, awake, right? We, we run our day on autopilot all the time. I do. And not to say that we're asleep at the wheel, but we're just on autopilot. And if we could take some time out to say, wait, what am I thinking right now? What am I feeling? What is the greatest opportunity in front of me? You know, what is it that I really want to do today? What is the one thing I need to accomplish today that will make everything else in my life really fall into place? What is the one thing I've been telling myself I can't do? Now that you, you want to take on a challenge, that's a powerful question. Write it down. What is the one thing I've been telling myself that I can't do? Write down whatever that one thing is and then go through the process I mentioned. Now you're aware you've been saying that to yourself. Ask yourself, where is that coming from? What evidence do I have that I can't do that? <laughs> what do I need to do to be better prepared to do it, right? See, sometimes we're just concerned or fearful that we don't have all the right information, that we lack knowledge. Well, how can you seek out more information and knowledge? We try to tell ourselves that we're not good enough to do it crazy. If you can think it, if you can create a vision for it, it's already meant for you. You realize that, right? The universe is here to support you. Your vision is speaking to you. If you've created a vision for it, it's yours. Now you just have to figure out the strategy to get there. We just have to bridge that gap. So why tell yourself it's not for you? Maybe you have to ask yourself, okay, what am I avoiding? Right, procrastination shows up and, and there's a lot of reasons why we procrastinate. So what are you avoiding? How, how badly do you want whatever that is? Right? Are you just interested in it or are you really committed to it? So if you're really committed to it, you can really understand whatever the strategy needs to be or you can, can commit to figuring that out. Who's to say you can't have whatever it is you've been telling yourself that you can't do or have? There's nothing we can't do or have. I mean, look at some of these people in the world around us, right? I, I don't know about you. I'm going to be very transparent right now. I have had the experience of reading books and watching people in their, in their strength zone. And, and I look at them and I'm supportive and excited and, and really like recognize their skill or talent. 
And then I say to myself, what is your problem? Because you're, you say the same thing all the time. I read books or listen to books. And I'm like, I say this all day long to people. Why did I write a book? Right. Or why aren't I on TV or why didn't I start that business? Or how come I didn't invent that? Tell me you haven't thought that before. I'm not alone. <laughs> okay. Cause otherwise you're hiding behind another limiting belief. No, it's so really like what, so what makes that individual any more capable than you or, or better than you that it's none of that. They just took their vision. They worked through whatever limiting beliefs they had, because I guarantee you they had them too. They worked through them. They got into action. They figured it out and they brought it to life. Tell me you're any less capable. You're not, you're not. Tell the negative committee in your head to sit down and shut up. You've got work to do. See, that's just distracting you. It's just there to really confuse you, bamboozle you and blind you. And it's, it's really about getting clear. Get clear about what it is you really want. One thing today, choose one thing that you're gonna take action on. And whatever thoughts start coming up around that, really pay attention. Really pay attention. Are the thoughts empowering you and inspiring you to figure it out? Or are they telling you all the reasons why it can't happen? And if it's telling you all the reasons why it can't happen, that's a little bit of work to do. You've got to get into this removing limiting beliefs. And, and you know, so after you're aware that you're doing it, after you figure out where it's coming from, and when you do that, it's a process too. You want to really peel the onion back, like go deep on it. Like, where did it come from? Why is it, why is that happening? Uh, is that really it or is there something else? So you really get to the root because just like the weed in your garden, if you only cut it off at the surface, it's, it doesn't appear to be there for a while, but eventually what happens? Returns. It grows back, right? So we got to get these limiting beliefs by its root and pull it out. And then you want to, you want to plant something else in its place. So you've got to plant a different dialogue. You got to plant a different belief. Now, it's not always as easy as just reversing it into something, you know, from negative to positive. Uh, and sometimes it is. But you really have to look at how to empower your thinking around all the things that you can do. A couple of months ago, and you can find all this on YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel and on the Facebook page. But a couple of months ago, I was actually on vacation. And I talked to you guys from the beach about the power of I am. And that is really probably, I would say the two most powerful words you could ever, ever say or think because what comes after I am will become your truth. So if you're gonna waste your time saying, I am not whatever, or I am less than, or I am whatever that negative message will be, it's going to step, it's gonna stop you in your tracks. However, if you can say things like, I am capable, I am smart, I am powerful, I am brilliant, I am looking for opportunity, I am attracting opportunity, I am going to figure this out. It, it's really about how we're conditioning our thoughts. And so those affirmations, um, the things that you say to affirm your beliefs are huge. If you're going to talk to yourself all day long anyway, why not make it powerful? Why not make it inspiring? If you hired me as your, your personal coach, your life coach, whatever you want to call that, and I was to talk to you in terms of things you could not do, how exciting would that relationship be? You'd fire me in a minute. So ask yourself, are you being your own inner critic or are you being your own inner coach? Because the coach is gonna find ways to support you and empower you. So turn the language into something you would be proud to say out loud. I like your vision board that you talked about a couple of weeks back. Yeah, how many of you have a vision board? It's, you know, you can do a vision board anytime you want. Of course, we're moving out of one year into a new year. Right. Uh, so that's always a time when a lot of people think about this, you know, the vision board, because again, our mind tends to think in pictures, right? It's like, right. if I tell you, if, so if I say to you a black and white cow, how many of you saw the black and white cow? Right. 
You yeah. see the cow in your mind, black and white cow. Now I'm going to say hot fudge Sunday. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Rooster. Fire truck. Did you all see the images in your mind? Did anyone see the words pop up in front of you like fire truck? No, because your, your mind thinks in pictures. So the vision board is a great opportunity for your unconscious mind to connect with those images. Your subconscious mind sees those pictures because it's, it's the language it works in. And it does not know the difference between real or unreal or fantasy or, or reality. It just takes it for what it is. So if you have that vision board in front of you 24 seven, that's the goal, right? You don't just make the vision board and stick it in the closet. It's gotta be in front of you. And those, those images represent the life you're building, the things you want to have. Yes, and it can be somewhat materialistic. Put the beautiful car and the lake house on there if you're committed to having it. Put images on your vision board that represent the goals that you want to accomplish and put that in front of you where you can look at it throughout the day and really connect, even, even taking a couple of minutes throughout your day to just stare at it and meditate and be aware of what you're saying. Don't look at your vision board and say, I'll have that one day. Wow, it would be nice to have a lake house. No, 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 negative committees in session, tell them get out. You're looking at those images and you're seeing yourself there. And you're looking at that lake house saying, I have a beautiful lake house. Look at that. <laughs> I love how it feels when I drive that car. Yes, my body feels good at that weight. Do you get it? Oh yeah. It's gotta be your reality like today, like it's already there. You've heard all this stuff before. It's not bullshit. It's true. <laughs> I figure this is my show. If I want to say bullshit, I can. Sorry if I offended you. You, you, could, you could say it many times. Thank you. <laughs> Just, you know, that, I think we quit bullshitting ourselves, right? It, right. It, it's really, look, I've said this to you before. Life is short. Life is unpredictable, right? We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen in, in an hour from now, tomorrow, or next week. So do you want to waste your life and the time that you have worrying and telling yourself all the things you can't do? What a waste of time. Find the things yeah. you can do. Find the things you can do and build on that and allow those results to program you and allow that programming to launch you into the next great thing you're going to do. If you're challenged by it, some of you, I can, I don't, I don't know. Somebody's right now thinking, I hear you, Anna, I'm trying, but it's not happening. Well, figure it out. What are you doing? That is got to change. What are you doing that? Because what is the definition of insanity, right? It's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So I don't know what's happening in your life, but I get it. Many of you are trying. So that I don't take away from you. The question is, are you putting enough time in and are you putting your time into the right activities? Maybe we have to look at different activities so you get different results. Maybe you're right. Maybe you don't know what to do next. Well, okay, let's figure it out. So either, you know, do what it takes to research and get more information or find someone who can help you figure it out. If we were on our way on a road trip, just go with me for a minute. You're in the car with me, we're on a road trip. And we are super excited about our destination. We can't wait to get there. We have a whole, whole itinerary. We have a whole plan. And we get down the road and there's a big, big boulder in front of us. And the road is shut down. The road is closed. Are we going to sit in the car and cry? Are we just going to sit there and be stuck and say, oh my God, the trip is over. See, but you do that sometimes to yourselves in your own life. So you hit a roadblock doesn't mean the dream is over you just need a detour right yeah. so if we're in that car we're gonna probably turn around and figure it out do we turn around and go home though is the trip over just because we had a roadblock not if we really wanted to get there in the first place we're going to figure out another way to get there so think of that as a metaphor that you can apply in your own life you know when the roadblock shows up what do you do what is your pattern do you sit there and allow yourself to be stuck and the road just ends for you right there? Do you turn around and go back and say, forget it? 
or do you stay committed to the to the plan and the destination and you figure out another way? Maybe that's a good place to end this morning. And make sure your cell phone is charged in case you have to call somebody. <laughs> yes, right. Well, that's true too, Joe. Like you have to have the right. Listen, all all of our goals. Right, similar to a road trip and, a, and a, a plan to get to a destination. That's what a goal is. It's a plan to get to a destination. Do you have the right tools? Yep. Have you prepared? Right. You're not going to get in the car without having the right tools and the right preparation. So the same thing for whatever you're trying to accomplish. So you make a great point. So I trust you got what you need to hear this morning. I always believe that you do. The question is, what will you do with it? Right. I, I love your feedback and I love that you're here. And I know that, that so many of you pull out these nuggets each week when we talk, yet the question is, what do you do with them? It's time to take action, my friends, right? It's time to move forward. So I'm just curious, I, I, Jill, I appreciate you uh, sharing this morning. Does anyone else have anything they wanna say or any questions before we, uh, we say goodbye and get on to the rest of our day? Okay. Well, I appreciate you guys. So I would love for you to go on to the Facebook page. Tell me what your um, takeaway was this morning. Because I think that by sharing those things, other people are watching the, the page, right? They may or may not be watching the video, but they may be watching the comments. So you're, you have the power to inspire someone. Imagine if what you shared, your aha, your takeaway, inspired someone to watch the video and then they decide to take action on something. Like you have the power to change someone's life today. So I really wanna encourage you, go to the Facebook page, share what your takeaway was, share what your aha was or what your plan is and, and use that as a place for inspiring and supporting each other. Thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna let you guys get on to the rest of your day. Uh, and remember the negative committee is out of session today. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Good, good day. And enjoy the week, Anna. Thanks. Take care. See you soon.